everybody, it's Ian, the off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. It's time to work on clue three of Tree of Life, the puzzle mystery quilt for cotton cuts. Hope you have your clue ready to go. Let's see how this one comes together. I love the colors of mine, and I know that this clue is going to be very, it's going to have a lot of varying colors amongst it. Can't wait to see what it looks like, so let's get started. All right, I have everything that I need to work on the clue three for the large tree of life puzzle mystery quilt. Have my instructions here. I of course have my clue packet with all of the pieces and then I have my fabric guide. Let's go ahead and open up clue packet three and see what all is included. Starting off, we have our 16A triangles and they are the small triangles. I have six small triangles of D I have six small triangles of fabric C. I have two, um, I guess these are going to be medium sized squares. They're the only squares in this. So I have two squares of fabric D. I also have two squares of fabric A. Next up, I have four large triangles of fabric D. I have two large triangles of fabric F, which I think is my favorite color in this colorway. I said that before, but I'll say it again. I love that color, color a lot. I have two large triangles of fabric C, and then I also have two large triangles of fabric B. Next up, I have two large rectangles of fabric A, and I'm trying to get it all to fit in here. And lastly, I have two large rectangles of fabric D. That's all that's included in this packet. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the table next to me and we'll start off with step number one. All right, we are gonna be putting together section 3A and these instructions tell you how to make two at the same time of section 3A. We're gonna start off with 1.1, which says to sew a small triangle of A to the top right of a large triangle of B, just like that. And then we're gonna press that and then we're gonna add our second A triangle to the top left, just like so. We're gonna make three of them, or excuse me, we're gonna make two of them. Where did I get three? I don't know, but we're gonna make two of them. Uh, 1.2 says to take a small D triangle to the top right of a small of a large C triangle, just like this. And then we're gonna press that and then we're gonna add our second D triangle to the top left. We're gonna make two of these just like this. And then for step 1.3, it says to join a 1.2 to the top of a 1.1, and we're gonna make uh, two of these. So when we put it all together, we're gonna flip them around. Whee! Look at all this beautiful camera work, camera work magic that you see in front of you. Basically, we're gonna add them on top of each other just like this. So we have our B fabric, our A fabric, our C fabric, and our D fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this all together. And uh, I'm not going to stop in between each one of those point cues, but I'm going to come back when this whole piece is put together so that way you can see how it looks when it's all together. But again, it's easily just attaching your A fabric to left and right of your B fabric, D fabric on the left and right of your C fabric, and then you stack them on top and do that seam down in between the two right in the middle. Super easy to make these flying geese. Let's go ahead and do that, and I'll come back when I'm pressing it out. Okay, I've sewn those together. Remember our A, B on top, C, D down on, <laughs> CD, like a CD player, CD down on the bottom. Gosh, does anybody ever use CDs anymore? I don't have, I don't even think I have any more CDs anymore. But anyways, <laughs> for pressing instructions, we're pressing towards the bottom. Um, so we're pressing in the opposite direction of our points here. And it looks like I almost got that point right there. Uh, it is gonna be a little difficult to press because you do have a bulk of fabric back here. Um, so I'm doing my best, but you know, it's gonna be a little, it's gonna, yeah, it, it's, it, well, <laughs> my pressing job did not go so well. That's okay, doesn't matter. What I do, what does matter is that we got it done. So there we go, there's our step one. Let's move on to step two. Okay, moving on to step 2.1. It says to sew a small triangle of C to a small triangle of A. We're gonna make two of those just like that. And then for 2.2, we're going to join a D square to the right of a step 2.1, and we're gonna make two of these in total. So A to C, we're gonna attach those just like that, and then we're gonna attach D on just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and sew those together, and then I'll come back and we'll move on to step number three. 
Okay, there we go. I have completed our 2.1, we're or 2.1 and 2.2, I should say. I'm going to go ahead and press this. I'm pressing towards our D fabric, and on our half square triangle, you press towards your C fabric. So it all ends up going in the same direction uh, towards our C fabric and then towards our D fabric. There we go. We finished 2.2. Let's move on to step three. All right, moving on to step three, it says to rotate a step 1.3 so that the B triangle is on the left. So here's our B triangle, it's on the left now. And now we're gonna add it to the top of our, or excuse me, we're gonna add 2.2 to the top of what we just turned uh, on its side there, 1.3. We're gonna make two of these. So you know you've done it right if your A fabric matches up on the diagonal and your D fabric matches up there in the corner. Ooh, this looks really cool in the camera. I just looked up at the camera and saw it, but there we go. This is what it's gonna look like. We're gonna sew across this seam right here. I'm gonna do that and I'll come back when I'm pressing it out. Okay, I've sewn those together and now we're pressing towards the top. So that, um, what is that? A, B, D square or rectangle. We're gonna be pressing towards that. Why did I turn that like that? I don't know. They're supposed to go this way. There we go. Not perfect, but again, we're not going for perfection. We're going for finished. That is always what we're going for, but there we go. There is step number three. Let's move on to step number four. Okay, moving on to step four, 4.1 says to sew a small D triangle to a small A triangle. So we're gonna put those two together just like that. Then we're gonna join an A square to the left of a step uh, 4.1. We're gonna make two of those. We're gonna make two of these. We're gonna make two of these. And then we're gonna move on to step 4.3, which says to sew a D rectangle to the bottom of a step 4.2. Now, obviously I haven't sewn these together so they don't match up yet but we're gonna make sure that our A fabric matches up and our D fabrics match up. I'm gonna go ahead and sew all this together and I'll come back when I'm pressing it out. Okay, we've completed our step 4.3. We're gonna to press towards our D rectangle, just like that. And it should look something like this when we're all said and done. Let's go ahead and move on to step number five. Okay, moving on to step number five. It says to join a step 4.3 to the top of a step three, and we're gonna make two. So this is a very interesting shape that we're making in this. Uh, so we have our step 4.3 at the top. Uh, you know you've done it right when your D triangle over here matches up with your D fabric on this side. It should all match up like this. I'm gonna go ahead and sew both of these together, and I'll come back when it's time to press it out. Okay, I have sewn those together and now I am pressing downwards towards the bottom of this um, strip of this section, whatever you wanna call it. Wow, this pressing is not going very well at all. Uh, you know, sometimes, for some reason this fabric just doesn't like to be pressed. I don't know why that is. It just, it sometimes just decides it wants to do whatever it wants and will ignore what I want it to do. That's fine. Anyways, again, we're going for finished, not for perfect. All right, so there we go. There's the strip piece right here. This is gonna be labeled 3A. We're gonna go ahead and set this off to the side and we'll start in on section 3B. Okay, starting off on section 3B, we're gonna be making uh, two of these at the same time of section 3B. Let's start off on 1.1, which says to sew a small triangle of A to the top right of a large triangle of D. We're gonna press that, and then we're gonna add a second triangle of A to the top right, just like this to make our flying geese. That is step 1.1. Uh, For step 1.2, we're going to join an A rectangle to the top of step 1.1, and we're gonna make two of those. So we're basically just gonna be making sure that our A fabric is all lined up and attached to itself and touching. I'm gonna to go ahead and sew all this together and I'll come back when I'm pressing it out. All right, there we go. I forgot to uh, hit record while I was pressing it, but we pressed towards that A rectangle. Looks like we're gonna set this aside for just a moment. We're gonna move on to step two. All right, moving on to step two, it says to sew a small C triangle to the top right of a large D triangle. C and D, yeah, just had to make sure I had the right fabrics there. And then we're gonna move on and we're gonna go ahead and press that, I should say. And then we're gonna move on and we're gonna attach our left triangle onto the top left, just like this. We're gonna press that. 
We're gonna make two of these in total. I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together and I'll come back when I'm pressing it out. All right, you've seen me press these out a million times and um, I also forgot. <laughs> yeah, anyways, you press out towards the outside towards our, uh, what is that, C fabric? So press towards your C fabric. All right, there we go. There's step two, let's move on to step three. All right, moving on to step number three, it says to sew a small triangle of A to the top right of a large triangle of F. Oh, look how, oh, oh I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to press that and then we're going to add our uh, a triangle to the top left. We're going to make two of these and uh, then we're going to press it out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll come back when I am finished with step three. All right, I have sewn those two together and now I am pressing them out. There we go. We have our two beautiful, I love this blue. I love this blue color. All right, that completes our step three. Let's move on to step four. Okay, moving on to step, uh, all right, moving on to step four, it says to rotate a step three so that triangle F is pointing downwards. We're gonna join that to the top of a step 1.2. So we're gonna put these together. Our yellow fabrics will join, well, you don't have yellow fabrics. I have yellow fabrics. Our A fabric is what I'm trying to get to. Our A fabric will match uh, together to form kind of this uh, reverse hourglass. I don't know, it'll form something, <laughs> but our A fabrics will be touching. And then we're going to join to the top, uh, a uh, join to the top of step three. Uh, so we're joining step two, I should say, to the top of a step three. So it looks like this. So we'll have our C fabric up here. Uh, our, our chevrons, our arrows are going to be pointing down basically towards our center A rectangle. I am just all over the place with what I'm trying to say, but here you go. This is what it's going to look like when we sew it all together. I'm going to go ahead and sew it all together and I'll come back when I'm pressing it out. All right, there we go. I have sewn those together and now I'm pressing downwards. So um, it's, oh, I did it the wrong way. Whoops, let's, let's put these the correct way. I just, uh, did I do that right? Yeah, I did it right on the first one. I just apparently decided to try and do it the wrong way on the second one. All right, so we're gonna press downwards. We're gonna follow our two arrows and we're gonna point them down towards the bottom of our strip you see here, just like that. There we go. All right, that is going to complete our section 3B. We're gonna be labeling that as 3B or clue B, either way, whatever you feel like labeling it as. All right, there we go. We have completed our clue three. We have our 3A here on our left, 3B on the right. I'm gonna label them as such and get them ready to go into the storage box. Uh, and we'll be get ready and prepared for clue number four which is a month away, but it will be here sooner than we think.